Ακολουθεί η Κέιτσι Δημητρίου. Η Κέιτσι είναι αστρονόμος. Με τη βοήθεια των δεδομένων και της τεχνολογίας, προσπαθεί να ξεκλειδώσει τα μυστήρια του διαστήματος. Το να κοιτάμε ψηλά, λέει, στα αστέρια, βοηθά όλους μας να βρούμε τον ερευνητή που κρύβουμε μέσα μας. Τίτλος της σημερινής της παρουσίασης, «Looking through the eyes of a giant». Have you ever looked up at the sky at night and seen hundreds of stars? If you hold up your thumb and cover just one of those stars, behind it lie a million more. How do we know this? Well, we use telescopes. Our eyes are amazing, but telescopes are much bigger. I want you to picture starlight like rain falling down onto the Earth. Telescopes act like funnels. They collect the rain which is starlight, and channel it into a wealth of information about our universe. So the bigger the funnel, the bigger the telescope, the more information we collect and the more we can earn, learn about our universe. So there are limits to the size we can build these devices. They're technologically challenging and take up a lot of space. So how can we overcome this problem? How can we build a big telescope. Well, a group of scientists came up with a plan. Their goal was to investigate black holes and take the first ever picture. To do this, they needed a telescope like the world has never seen before. They needed a giant telescope. They needed a telescope the size of a planet. So how did they do this? I haven't seen any Earth-sized telescopes lying about lately. The answer is persistence, teamwork, and innovation. If one is not enough to do the job, maybe many can be. So the team coordinated eight different telescopes from around the world, from Hawaii to Spain, Antarctica to Chile to Mexico. And they simultaneously targeted them at a place in the sky that they believed the black hole to exist. This took extreme synchronization. They had to use the most accurate atomic clocks that we have. As the Earth rotated, they carry, carried on working. The amount of data collected was massive, five petabytes. This is so much data that it was unable to be transferred via the internet. What the scientists had to do was load it onto hard drives, half a ton of hard drives. These hard drives had to be lifted and flown to the collection point. In the end, after two years of manipulation, processing, and hard work, they did it. They released that picture last month, and we have the first ever picture of a black hole. So through teamwork, collaboration, and a plan that started two decades ago, we can finally see through the eyes of a giant. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. So persistence, uh, teamwork, and uh, leads to innovation, you said. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Questions to Katie from Miss Elena Pulli. I must say it's very tempting to disappear in such a black hole <laughs> at certain times. So my first question would be, where is the closest the black cl hole uh, to us? And my second would be, do they have a lifespan, <coughs> black holes? Like, okay. do, does their life come to an end and then a new one is created afterwards? So um, it's actually extremely hard to detect black holes. Uh, this is why that picture was so important, because it's the actual first direct evidence we have of them. Uh, there are black holes that are fairly close to us. The one that the picture was taken of was 55 million light years away. But there is a supermassive black hole at the center of our own galaxy, which is still quite far away. 
The smaller black holes exist, and they're closer, but we don't have to worry about them. They're still light years away. Um, and the team did try to take a picture of the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. They haven't released an image yet, so they are processing the data still. So the images were taken in 2017 from the virtual telescope that acted like the Earth. So we're all waiting to see if they can come up with a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. Okay. You have another and lifespan? Okay, Do they have okay lifespan? the lifespan of black holes. So um, black holes, they grow and they can eat matter, light, and collide and combine. And there is a theory that was proposed by Stephen Hawking called Hawking radiation. So Hawking radiation, around the event horizon of a black hole, which is the boundary between where you can still be okay and after that you disappear into the singularity, around that boundary, there may be an effect that quantum physics and gravity combine, and this is called Hawking radiation. So Hawking predicted that these black holes can evaporate, but the time that he predicted for it to evaporate is billions and billions and billions of years in the future. So we haven't detected this yet, but I hope okay. we do, so we can okay. prove that Thank you. his calculations are correct. Thanks. Thank you for the lovely ride. Uh, Katie to the black hole and back. Um, so could you describe a little what this unique photo is about? What, what have we seen and what have we learned? Uh, perhaps have we verified or uh, disqualified Einstein's theory of relativity? Okay, um, it's, it's verified Einstein's theory. These objects actually exist. They were predicted in the early 1900s um, from his mathematical equations of general relativity. So this actually has verified it because from that image, I know it's blurry and it's not very pixelated, but you can see that the light is gathering in one place. And that shows you that space time is actually moving around the center of the black hole. So the fact that, that this particular black hole was chosen because it's perpendicular to us. So by looking at it, we, we predicted that there would be that ring there. It's also really, really massive. So it confirms Einstein's theory of general le relativity. So it's another confirmation and a direct confirmation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Nice shirt. <laughs>